Good day. This is Dr. David Battle, and it is my privilege to uh, lead you through the Introduction to Biblical Studies, a course of Claflin University online program, and this is Religion 201. Now, before we begin, I'm going to tell you what the course is not and what the course is so that you can appreciate what we will be doing and understand why we don't do certain things as we go through the Bible. After all, to go through the whole Bible in one course is an awful lot of material, so we have to be selective. The first thing that I want you to realize is that this course is not a survey of the Old and New Testaments. Now, we are going to go through the whole Bible, both Old and New Testament, but it's not a survey which simply means this, is that first we won't do uh, what a survey normally does. A survey normally goes through each book one at a time, uh, establishing the narration. For example, yes, we will start in the book of Genesis, but we're not going to develop a comprehensive outline of the book, and we won't trace uh, that we trace throughout the whole book. Yes, we will be dealing with major characters and themes in some of the books, but we're not going to trace it all in each book. We will just be looking at the literature as a whole and the different types of literature that are found in the scripture. In addition to that, we are not doing an introduction to the Old and New Testament. Now, an introduction in biblical studies is more advanced than a survey. Here we deal with issues uh, such as the question of authorship. Who wrote each book? Uh, when did they write it? Why did they write it? And we don't really get into those details because there's a whole host of arguments that go back and forth. You have your traditional and then you traditional arguments for various positions and other uh, uh, people have presented other variations on those over the years. And gets really deep, uh, really academic and a lot of stuff that has to do with more about uh, how one studies and what one believes than what the content of the text or the literature of the Bible is. The other thing is that uh, the question of historicity. Now the question of historicity is simply is the narrative that the Bible is telling them, is it historically accurate, is it not historically accurate, how accurate it is. Well, in this study, we just do not have the time to go and study ancient Near Eastern history and or archaeology and then the cultures of the past and see how, uh, whether they support historicity of the text or not support historicity of the text. We are interested as literature. What does the text say? Um, lastly, we'll be touching on these issues again, but uh, only in relation to the Bible as a religious canon and as part of certain uh, critical reconstructions of the composition of the Bible. But that will not be our focus. Our focus will be on the Bible as a piece of literature. Okay, so what is this course about? Well, biblical literature. This is a course that is designed to introduce you to the different types of literature that are found in the Bible. Now, the Bible is not a monolithic work. In fact, it is an anthology of, over, of, of 66 different works that were composed over 1,500 years by some 30 acknowledged authors in three different languages. Each author wrote in a particular form or literature, literary style called genre suited for his own personal style and message. The Bible includes many different types of literary styles or genres, much of the Bible is a histor has historical narratives in it, which recount the history of the family of Abraham, the nation of Israel, and the life of Jesus, as well as the growth of the early church. The Bible also contains poetry. Uh, most of us can think of the Psalms, prophetic oracles found in the, old, in the prophets. Uh, the book of Proverbs contains proverbial sayings. And Ecclesiastes and Job contain... Uh, speculative wisdom in them. Each one of these expressed their message in a very specific way, and understanding each literary genre and context helps you understand the message of each book. Now, as you go through the Bible, you'll be hoping that, or as you go through this course, uh, we hope that you will learn to read the Bible in a contextual and literary manner. 
That basically means that since each writer used as a different style or genre, that you become familiar with the basic styles and genre of the text and be able to understand the message. You'll also recognize uh, the general context. Now, as far as the genre, you'll recognize that poetry does one; it will express things one way, and narratives another. Context is very important in understanding uh, what a passage means or phrase means. In fact, if we were to take a phrase out of context and just let it stand there, I can give you a demonstration. Let's take the phrase, Jordan glided through the air, dunking the ball. Now, if you were from outer space and you didn't have any context, or, and that was the only phrase you had, and you wanted to interpret it, and you just so happened had an English dictionary, and so you'd start translating. You'd come to the word Jordan, and you'd recognize the word Jordan could be a nation, the nation of Jordan. It could also be a river, the River Jordan. It could be the Jordan River Rift Valley. Uh, those three different uses of the word Jordan. Also, you may realize that the word Jordan is a name of an individual, so, and you'll discover that it could be a name for a uh, a male or a female, so that kind of tells you it's either a place or a person. Then you get the word glided through the air. Well, that kind of helps you realize that a place doesn't glide through the air, so it has to be a person. And so you look up word glided and you start doing studies on gliding. You find out that uh, humans were known to fly these things called gliders, which were planes without engines in the air, and that they would go flying uh, various different places. Uh, that way, in fact, they were used very heavily during the invasion of Normandy during World War II. So you can see that you have a person who is flying a glider through the air. Then you look at dunking the ball. Well, you study the word dunking and you discover that means to put into the water, immerse. And so you kind of puzzle yourself on that. You know, how can a person be flying and dunking? Well, the ball, well, you find out there's such thing as a ball of... Um, uh, ball of dough, which is a type of which you make bread from. So this could be a type of and you have donuts that you dunk into coffee. So maybe you're dunking this this ball of dough into the cup of coffee. So the way you interpret the passage is there are this line is that there's this guy flying this glider, uh, drinking coffee as he dunks his uh, uh, donut like uh, confection into his cup of coffee. Now, uh, if you got more context, you'd quickly realize this context was probably a sporting event. And a little bit more context might tell you that this is a basketball game. And therefore, the word ball would suddenly become a basketball. And if you had some historical background, you might realize that we're talking about Michael Jordan. And so now notice with more context, suddenly the passage has a totally different meaning. And that's what we'll hope you'll be able to do, is be able to look and recognize the context and the, liter uh, and the type of literature that the Bible is and be able to understand it as it is intended to be understood. Now, we also hope that you will understand how the writers attempted to communicate their message. And this is very important because narration does, communicates differently from poetry. Narratives typically emphasize the words and actions of people. Poetry, on the other hand, typically emphasizes the emotions or the inner sensibilities of people. So you can have the same, a poetic passage talking about an event and a narrative passage talking about an event, and they will be totally different in their implications. So as we continue with what it is, what it is, another aspect of this course will be more academic and where we look at the various critical literary approaches used by scholars to understand the message and their implications in the text. Now, we have to understand the Bible has been interpreted by scholars for over 2,000 years. Each generation and group has their own way of communicating and understanding things. Preachers of each generation attempt to communicate the message of the text to their own culture and time. Uh, these various attempts employ different specialized methodologies by which they mine the text for information and new ways of understanding it or better ways of communicating. Now, some of these methods were very fanciful and some were very successful. But you need to be aware of them so that you can understand how people and why people interpret a passage in different ways. 
Today, we are beginning a postmodern age which draws upon the conclusions of many literary uh, scholars of the modern age, and so you need to be aware of those. You need to be aware of what these literary scholars in the past were trying to do when they studied the text, and that they were looking at the text to try to establish the sources behind the text, and the history of the tradition that's behind the text, and the life setting of a passage. All of this constitutes what's called literary criticism, which an educated reader needs to know in order to understand both modern and postmodern claims about the text. Lastly, we want to look at the outcomes of this course. If you haven't picked it up, we're hoping that you'll become an educated reader of the Bible. Now, anyone can uh, talk about his own understanding of the text. I remember a man who discovered the red letters in his Bible, and he was so thrilled that he had found the Word of God. Now, what he was missing was that the red letters were, uh, that red font wasn't added until the 20th century, and so it, the Bible had been printed and read for almost 1,500 years before, uh, 1,500 years before, 1,900 years before the red letters came in. And so, you know, this is something that, you know, he thought he had just discovered the Word of God because these red letters highlighted Jesus. Now, what he was missing was that the black letters that are around the words of Jesus often set the context of what Jesus was saying. And you can't understand what Jesus is saying without looking at the context. And so he kind of just had a very skewed or very unbalanced understanding of what he was reading. The educated reader, on the other hand, reads the text carefully and he reads it contextually. Now, in addition to that, he also is able to give reasons why particular for particular understandings of the text, whether or not he agrees with those understandings, but he's able to see where they are getting or how they are getting that understanding. And so that's what we'll be dealing with. Uh, so it's important for the educated reader to not only uh, recognize the context of what is written and how that context affects the understanding of the message, but it is also important for the educated reader to be able to articulate why people, why and how people, of ver uh, uh, why and how people uh, can propose various nuances and, and, and various interpretations of a passage, and be able to recognize what their agenda is in their interpretation, or if they are just reading the text as is, or just using the text for some reason. Lastly, what we don't want you to become is like the man who wanted to know what the message of the Bible was for him. So he opened up a Bible and he put his finger down on a passage and read. He departed and went and hanged himself. Now this struck the man as not very inspiring, so he closed his Bible. And after opening it a second time, he put his finger down and read, Go, you go, and do likewise. Now this shocked the man a little and he thought this cannot be. So he closed his Bible and reopened it. Looking where his finger pointed, he read the words, what you are going to do, do quickly. May we not approach the reading of the Bible this way.